Your average PC fan can have many different purposes. You can use it as a case fan and let it fight against the dust filter or in the back as a slow spinning exhaust fan. Then we also got the heatsink fans used on a CPU air cooler. Those need to be able to push the air a bit harder as there is quite a bit of metal in the way. But the supreme discipline of forcing your way through are still radiate. Wow, that sounded wrong. To effectively get the air through these bad boys, the fans need to be able to push at an exceptionally high static pressure while not forgetting to add some air into the mix. Looking at a PQ scale or a fan airflow to static pressure scale, a good radiator fan needs to be above everything else on the static pressure axis, then push as much as it possibly can. Or in other words, it needs to be really freaking good. But not every fan is good. Some are barely able to lift a sheet of paper off the tables, while others require me to alert local authorities as they may pull nearby airplanes down a few meters. I believe, however, we made a good choice for today's contestants. We tried to pick and choose the obvious ones, the ones where everybody starts to make freaking YouTube comment ones about. The Fantex T30 and Noctia NFA25, the god tier of fans. Of course they would be in here, what, what else would be in here? Both of these are some really interesting fans. Compared to any other fan that is going to be used today, both of them are made out of LCP or liquid crystal polymer, a material a lot stronger than the usual plastic. And by using that material, both of these fans have the advantage that their wings can be a bit longer and almost touching the outer border of the frame as the, the, the rigidness prevents them from expanding too much while they are spinning at crazy numbers and thus touching the outer frame. But the Fantex T30 got a, got a little trick up its sleeve. Additionally to being a damn powerful fan, the T30 is also 5mm thicker compared to the Nord. This gives it quite the big boost as there is generally a lot more wing space to work with compared to the usual 25mm thickness. However, I wanted to include more. After all, you never know and I wanted to have more companies represented. Noxia and Fantex are, you know, they are not the whole industry. From House Arctic we got the P12 fan and the fan is already used on the iconic and best-in-class Arctic Lucid 3360. Surely a P12 must be able to deliver quite, quite a good fight. Be Quiet also got some representation. Here we chose to go with the Silent Wing 3 high speed because they are also used on the Silent Loop AIO and those are pretty amazing fans in general. Then we decided to give Noctua kind of a double representation. Theoretically, out of their regular NF lineup, the NFF12 is the static pressure focused fan. So basically, the F12 should be on the list, not the A12X25. Therefore, we decided to give the F12 a chance. You never know. Well, I already know, but you never know. For the Fantex T30, um, there is also a little twist. As the T30 got that max speed limiter built in, we will give the T30 also two separate spots. Once as the 3000 RPM monster that it truly is, and once as the max 2000 RPM mini monster that is actually comparable to an NFA12X25. Here do keep in mind that performance and noise will be absolutely the same if you take the 2000 RPM mode and then set it to 100% and then take the 3000 RPM mode and turn it down to be at 2000 RPM, whatever the percentage is right now. But everything from that moment on will be the same. However, due to how PVM and you know working with percentages it's turning out, the measuring points of both fans are not going to be exactly the same in terms of RPM. Hence, the two graphs will sometimes be a tiny bit shifted towards each other, but in the end they will align at some point. As the last contestant, we've got a very special fan. A fan of many great qualities. It is an industry fan capable of surviving dust storms. It can be disassembled into pieces for easy cleaning, and it got a highly unique feature that could push it to the top of the benchmark list, the Akeza Auto SC12. Although neither of the auto fans were particularly good in, in the global benchmarks, I decided to give it a try as a, you know, a, a, a bench player. After all, this fan was specifically built to cool down radiators and, and you never know. And I see in the camera now that my fans are off-shifted and that gives me an aneurysm. Oh, tick, 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 tick.
way better. So this is our final setup. The Arctic P12, the Be Quiet Silent Wing 3, the Noxia NFF12, the Akeza Odo SC12, the Fantex in performance mode, the Noxia NFA12X25 and the Unchained Fantex at 3000 RPM. The first test I wanted to try today is big as radiator. Basically, give the fan the best possible scenario where they can fully expand on their capability. For this, we decided to go with the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360. Of course, after removing the original fan. Not only is the pump on these LF coolers exceptionally good, but the thicker 38mm radiator provides significantly more fill area compared to the usual 27mm that we all know. We used it on top of our thermal take P5. Yeah, that's, let's call it a case due to the zero air restriction and absolute openness. After all, it's about the radiator fan, not the case. Beneath the cooler, we've got our trusty old Ryzen 3900X locked at 4.2 GHz and 1.4 volts V-Core. Or in other words, this thing pulls about 135 watts out of the sock. All said and done. Now let's see how far the fans are apart from each other. Fuck. Well, apparently the LF360 radiator is, is so big and, and so efficient, although 130 or 140, whatever, watts of the 3900X are just not significant enough to create a, a real difference. Looking at the noise to performance graphs, however, already gives us a pretty good picture on how loud these fans actually are. You can read the graph in the following way. On the y-axis, we have the temperature of the 3900X, while the x-axis represents the noise that the fans blast at. While doing the benchmarks, we essentially start at 100% ppm and then slowly lower it while taking measuring points along the way and just, you know, making a line out of them. This way, we, we know that the best case scenario is in the bottom left corner, and basically that's the quietest and coldest point at the same time, and the top right spot would be the hottest and, and loudest place, you know, the, the point where you don't want to be. To keep it simple, the closer a given fan is to the lower left corner, the better it is. Of course, the whole line is of importance. If a fan just jumps to, to a corner and then is in a really bad spot for the whole rest of the test, that's no use too. Here, although these look like they are all performing differently, please keep in mind that the difference between here and here is like 2 degrees C not even nearly enough to 100% accurately confirm that this is outside the scope of, of the margin of error. However, what we can already see is that there is a very clear trend of the T30 in performance mode to be in front of the competition at all times. Interesting. So the conclusion of the first test, having a really good radiator makes comparing fans really hard. So I just lowered the pump speed of the liquid freezer down to 50%. This will then hopefully generate a lot more heat on, on the CPU end and it will put more responsibility on the fans as they have, you know, more time and more heat to cool down from the water. Uh, yeah. Well, apparently the Liquid Freezer 360 is just so freaking good for a, a Thermal X that even with a, a barely spinning pump, there, there is just no difference. Funnily enough, the only fan that took a visible hit is the Fantex T30 in performance mode. This one jumped a degree at the wrong place, which made it not stand out anymore and it essentially gave up its spot to the Arctic P12, but those numbers are like so close to each other it's not representative. So none of these tests now were really conclusive to be honest, but we've learned something quite important. If your radiator and pump are really good, the choice of fan is, is actually not that important given that you didn't go for a piece of crap. In the end, the, the cooling performance of a water-cooled system as a whole is a group effort. If the radiator is so good that the fan is basically sitting on the bench, it's hard to say which one of these bench sitters is the best one. So let's create a really heavy work for the fans. We decided to ditch the liquid freezer for its awesomeness and went for a tiny whiny NZXT Kraken N22. Yes, a single 100mm red to cool down a 3900X. But as we didn't want to take our chances again, the radiator got an extra dose of Ebola in form of a 50% PVM cripple on the pump speed. And now, finally, we got what we were looking for. Letting each fan run at 100% of its max speed, we can finally see how, how there is some space being generated in between all of them. Unsurprisingly, the Unchained T30 running at 3000 RPM managed to keep the CPU the coldest at 55 degrees C, with the Odo SC12, the underdog, closely behind at 56. The third spot is again on Team Fantex side. In 2000 RPM mode, the 
T30 reach 57 degrees C. From there, the fourth and fifth spot are being shared by Noctua and Be Quiet at 59 degrees C. And it's exactly here where stuff begins to get interesting. Although the dedicated review concluded that the A12X25 was the superior all-purpose fan, compared to a T30, the T30 is clearly the winner for radiator performance, at least in, in, in raw performance. Lois 2 performance is still an open question. For the Be Quiet Sunning Wing 3 a high speed, however, it's interestingly weird. Out of the T30 performance, NF A12X25 and Silent Wings trio, the Silent Wing got the highest static pressure and highest CFM at the same time. And it is spinning at 200 RPM quicker, so just by spec sheet, the Silent Wing should be the first one of all the bunch, but it's actually not even able to beat the A12. At 60 degrees C, we have the Arctic P12, and although the second last spot is not necessarily the, the best place to aim for, I do want to remind you that for the price of, of any of, of these fans, except for the P12, you will get 3 to 7 P12s. Yeah, a single T30 equals 7 P12s. So I give it a, a hard pass on the criticism here. The last spot goes to my favorite fan in the world, the Noctia NFF Useless. At 61 degrees C, the radiator-specific fan managed to be outperformed by everything. Yay. So far, the T30 is definitely the winner. And the underdog actually managed to pull off quite well with the Silent Wing and Noctia NFA 12 shortly behind that. But that was just brutal, all win, all hit, brute force performance. And let's be honest, you do not want to sit next to a T30 spinning at max speed for a very long time. Popping your diaphragm with a screwdriver should not be a side effect of good cooling. The graph that really matters to determine the absolute best radiator fan is noise to performance. Here we will finally see the real difference between those fans. Going from top right corner down, the fan that performed the worst of them all is actually a duo. Considering that it's hard to determine which is worse, the, the hardest or the loudest, without a significant gain in temperature, both the Be Quiet Silent Wing 3 High Speed and Noctia NF F12 did not perform particularly well in this competition. So this and this. Congratulations, you're bad. After that, we actually got a bit of a cluster of fans. The Arctic P12, Noctia NF A12 X25 and Akeza O2 SC are all peaking at somewhat the same level. The, the differences can be just seen at the extremes. While the Arctic P12 dies off pretty quickly while lowering its speed, which, is, which basically just means that it needs to spin very very fast at all times to, to just keep going, the NFA 12X25 is kind of the middle ground player here. Noise 2 performance wise pretty much the same, but it can keep on going a bit longer compared to AP12. The Akeza O2SC needs a bit of an explanation. The reason that the fan is not like hitting thermal throttle at some point is that there is a, a minimum rotation speed of about 1000 RPM built in. And the fact that the, the fan is specifically built to push as much air as possible at an insane 3.84 mm of H2O is the reason why it can go on for so long at the cost of noise. So, these two. But from here we will get to the real winner of this competition, the Fantex T30. While we can clearly see where the performance mode ends and where the Unchained Beast mode begins, there is no doubt that the T30 is always a tick ahead of everybody else. No matter if you're looking for the quieter experience at a given temperature, or at the best temperature at a given noise level, the T30 will always be the man for the job on top of a radiator. Plus, if left unchained, the T30 can go on and on and on, so if, if needed, there is a freaking ton of headroom left to be used. But a few things that are noteworthy here. I threw in the Arctic P12 as kind of a last minute thing just to have like an affordable reference fan, but, but shockingly to me, it performed extremely well. I would never call it better than a Noxia NF A12 75 as it is dying off significantly faster, but considering how much air it is able to push at max speed compared to an A12 at the same temperature level, I did not expect them to be that close. The same goes for the Akeza SC12. Sure, as a, as a case fan or a, a, a heatsink case hybrid, that, that thing is pretty much garbage, but 
It's a surprisingly good radiant effect. Plus, don't forget the extra feature. No comment on the NFF12 and Silent Big 3. I think the benchmarks are talking for themselves. So what is the absolute best radiant effect? I mean, there is just one fan sitting in front of me and it's clearly the T30. Maybe it's the added 5mm thickness that gave it a, a mini performance boost and that allowed it to stand out. Who knows? Or maybe it's the liquid crystal polymer which reduced spacing in between the fan blades and the frame. We will never know, but probably it's a combination of the, of the little things that, that in the end created an, an amazing radiator. No matter what it is, congrats to the T30. With that question answered, I guess this was it for the best radiator fan out there. But if you want to keep watching, have a look at our take on the T30 individually. There is quite a bit more to know about the fan than just that it is a good radiator fan. And if you want to join the Discord server and start another T30 against a 12 x 25 war, yeah, let's lash out there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and until the next one, bye bye.